Okay, so let's start this off. Uh, who are you? I'm Stefan Helgeson, and I'm the founder of and one of four general partners at uh, Crandom here in Stockholm. Okay, so what does Crandom do? We are a venture capital firm that invests in the best Nordic startups in the IT space. Okay. Uh, now, rumor has it you have accumulated this huge database, uh, what, what some call the, the secret random database uh, of tech exits uh, on the Scandinavian market. Uh, perhaps not the right uh, way to describe it, but could you yeah. describe the database? Why, why have you created it? Well, it goes back to a discussion we had internally about five, six years ago when yeah. we realized that many of the entrepreneurs that come here, they get the question on how large is your market? Yeah. And then we looked at ourselves and said, to be honest, we don't know how large our market is. Yeah. And you can't do business without knowing the size of your market. So we realized that we had to figure out the size of our market. And the size of our market is basically the sum of all exits done during a year, i.e. how much money is being sent back to owners of companies that are being sold. So we started that work maybe five, six years ago, and it's a database that goes back to probably 97, 98, so wow. about 15 years worth of exits, and it has some pretty interesting data points in it. Okay. So could you give us some highlights? Yeah, one, one of the highlights is that if you look at the Nordics in a global perspective, uh, the Nordics, despite its relatively small market, yeah. is big in terms of exit dollars. So one example of that is that if you go back seven, eight years, the Nordics is almost 10% of all the world's billion dollar exits in IT. Wow. That's huge. That's pretty huge. And not only do we have a fair portion of billion dollar exits, we actually have an underlying exit market that even though cyclical, actually grows over time. Okay. So obviously 98, 99, 2000 was a heck of an exit cycle. But then there was a new one in 05 to 07. And the average or the absolute dollars was actually larger 05 to 07 than it was 98. To 2000. Why so, so why is that? Why, why, why do you see a growth in, in that sort of numbers? I think it has to do with many factors, but perhaps the most important one is that you know, IT or tech really was not a market at all 20 years ago. And if you look at the combination of NASDAQ and Wall Street today, it's almost 20% of total stock market value. So it's a market that has gone from zero to about 20% of, of, uh, of the US economy in okay. only 20 years' time. Do you have any, any exciting examples of, of exits uh, during, these, uh, during these years? Well, I think the big ones are pretty obvious. You know, you have Skype, you have ClickTech, you have MySQL, uh, you have REC in Norway, a big solar cell company that went public. Uh, but more interesting, I think, is that if you go beyond those, during the last 10 years, the Nordics has had, if I remember correct, 42 exits that are larger than 100 million euros. If you then try to look into the future, you have companies such as uh, King, Spotify, Klarna, Rovio, Supercell, um, Mojang, so Minecraft, etc., etc. So. We don't think this is a fluke. This is not a hype that happened you know, once in a lifetime. We actually think that the, the ground is pretty fertile and we will see you know, another wave of, of big exits come so, in the near future. So, so two questions. Why is the ground <coughs> fertile and, and what do you see uh, ahead? Yeah. What are the trends ahead? Yeah. So that, that's a really good question. We spent some time trying to understand you know, why this, this is a good place. And I think the answer is quite complicated because it goes back to probably five or six different factors. I think high level of education is one. Uh, being a small market is another one. So initially, I mean, it, almost immediately, a startup in the Nordics have to go beyond the borders of Sweden or even the Nordics yeah. itself. Uh, I think the fact that we've had only in Sweden about 25 companies 
that are all multinational and have had operations in 100 plus geographies. I think the training ground and the mentality that that gives you is, is pretty important. It's just natural. Yeah. Absolutely. If you compare with Germany or the US, it's a huge difference. Um, I think the fact that we have had very good cooperation between the state and the enterprise sector. I think NMT, so Nordic Mobile Telephony, is a very good example, where actually the Nordics went together, uh, they defined a, a standard, and they had Telia uh, as the state buyer, buying the stuff that Ericsson and others were producing. That gave critical mass in a relatively small market. I think the, uh, the PC at home reform was very important. Mm. Uh, I think broadband, for, for not for everyone, but for most of us, has been important, etc., uh, etc. Et and I think that having a marginal tax rate of 72%, if you include social fees, is a driver for entrepreneurial activity because the capital gains tax is between 24 and 30 percent and that's a huge difference and that's that's an interesting factor uh, you were, we were we were talking earlier and, and, and you mentioned that you see a new generation of founders yeah. uh, finding their way to the market absolutely Can you elaborate yeah. a bit on that so I mean I've been doing this for soon 15 years and if you go back 15 years everyone was a first timer I was a first timer the entrepreneurs were first timers the journalists were first timers the service providers, so legal people, etc. Everyone was doing this for the first time, plus the market wasn't ready. A lot of things have changed since then, and most important, I think the whole ecosystem has gotten better. People are doing it not for the first time, but for the second and third time. And I think the last couple of years, we're seeing specifically that some of the startups five, six, seven, eight years ago are now becoming big companies. And in Sweden, that's predominantly Spotify and Klarna and King and a couple of other ones. Yeah. And we're now seeing a new generation of entrepreneurs that are coming out of those companies. So they have seen that it's possible to in Stockholm create a billion dollar company, a company that goes global from, if not from day one, but early on. Yeah. And they have learned that they can do it themselves. So they're starting their own companies. So now the three uh, game change questions we always ask at Game Change. Yeah. So the first one is, why are you personally passionate about startups? I don't know if I'm passionate about startups per se, but I'm passionate about building things. That can be our own firm, it can be a startup, it can be uh, building Sweden or Stockholm on the global scene. I, I mean, I like building stuff and I think the best place to do that is to do it with startups and to couple that with what we do uh, at Crandom we think that if you're successful at building companies the financial returns will come as a result of being successful in building the companies it's not the other way around because if you think it's the other way around you're in the business of buying cheap and selling expensive and that's never going to produce uh, great returns. That's not building, that's trading, right? Exactly. Uh, so now the uh, second question. Wha what's the best way to kill a perfectly good startup in ah. your experience? <sighs> that's probably if you try to over control, over engineer, over involve yourself as an investor in a startup. I think we all know that the business model you start out with is not the one that will prevail. The exact go-to-market strategy that you start out is not the one that's going to last. So if you try to be too rigid, too strict, too controlling, I think you're set out for failure. You need to realize that a startup is a living organism that needs to change, if not daily, but relatively often, especially in the beginning. Because you don't know what, what success looks like in the beginning. Okay, uh, so why is it game-changing to work with you at Crandom? <clears throat> Probably because all of us at Crandom, even the people in our back office and operations department, have either run their own startup, built their own company, or worked in the management of an extremely fast-growing company. Uh, I think very s that's very seldom that you see firms with that type of, of uh, people set up. 
regardless of whether they're partners or associates or whatever. Okay, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.